On today's part of my take, day one of March Madness in the books. We're going to talk about all the games, Kentucky's stunning loss. We brought on our good friend Matt Jones from Kentucky Sports Radio to talk about what's happening in Kentucky. Uh, will Cal survive this? If he doesn't, who could possibly coach the Wildcats? We get the inside scoop from Big Blue Nation. We also have our good friend Stanford Steve on to give you some Friday picks. So we talked tourney with Stanford Steve, some picks that you're going to be watching today, so you're going to want to listen. Also, shout out to everybody that's actually listening to today's podcast. Yes. Because I think usually this Friday is the lowest uh, listen to episode of the year because everyone's watching basketball. So please so, re-download. So you have to download it twice and leave a five-star review to get the entire episode. Uh, but you are one of the filthy few. Yeah. If you're listening to this, refresh your, your uh, you know, Rumble, YouTube, wherever you're watching it, refresh it a couple times. Get us some more views. Uh, but yeah, and then we're gonna finish off with Firefest, and it's all brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. We got all these games tomorrow. We're actually at the DraftKings Sportsbook at Wrigleyville. Today, it's attached to Wrigley. It is incredible. Incredible place to go watch games. Uh, they're opening these sports books all across America. DraftKings Sportsbook is in your phone as well. Uh, we got some great games. We're going to probably do some more picks, but I'll throw one line that I just, I'm just looking at it. I'm looking at UAB. I'm just taking a look at UAB. They're six and a half playing San Diego State in one of the early slates. And also, North Carolina listeners, your Tar Heels are playing today. Your Duke Blue Devils are playing today. Your NC Tar Heels played yesterday. Tar Heels played yesterday. They already won. That's right. I forgot mm -hmm. everything because there's so much stuff that happened. And also, your NC State Wolfpack won. Uh, but your Duke Blue Devils played today. But you are live. DraftKings is live in North Carolina. So you can get in on the action. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use code TAKE. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code TAKE. The crown is yours. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part in My Take, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code TAKE right now. Today is Friday, March 22nd, and Jack Golke has captured the hearts of a nation. The Oakland Grizzlies? Golden Grizzlies? Golden Grizzlies. I knew that. Take down Kentucky in the one true stunner from day one of March Madness, Jack Golke hit 10 threes. From Michigan, Oakland is. Yes, from from, from Detroit. Uh, hit 10 threes. He was the perfect. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah. I did not know that until just now. I was I was looking up Jack Golke stats before we started doing the podcast, and I was like, oh, I guess he uh, played small ball in Michigan somewhere, then he moved out to California. He's actually from Pewaukee. Yeah, Wisconsin. Home of. Derek Watt. Yes. And JJ Derek Watt and TJ yes. Watt. Yes. Uh yeah, it is in Michigan. I'm assuming Horizon a, a lot of people will be learning that. That that guy could not miss. It was incredible. He was double teamed. He was coming off screens with no daylight, just sinking everything. That was it was so much fun. It yeah. was so much fun. He he is uh he's the perfect March Madness guy. He has taken a total of eight two pointers all season long. Mm -hmm. One of the coolest stats out there. He, didn't he take was a single one. He was shooting shots that he should ne no one should be shooting. Fully covered, just draining threes. That was perfectly March Madness. And he had a quote after where he was like, "I know that they have a bunch of NBA guys. I know that I'm not going to be playing in the NBA, but on any given uh, day, I can compete with those types of guys." 
that's what March Madness is. This guy is going to absolutely rock some like men's league basketball. And he was, yeah, he's perfect because he already looks like a men's league basketball player because he's kind of got like a little bit of the male pattern baldness starting. His bit head is huge. He's got a little Derek Carr in him. Yeah, and I hope it keeps going. I do too. Because, well, actually, we'll see because we basically have a matchup of America's sweethearts uh, in the second round now because it's Jack Golke and the Oakland Golden Grizzlies going up against the team that just cannot lose right now in NC State. Yeah, uh, like they two, they two did very it again. fun teams. Yeah, they've won six straight well six straight tournament games because they won five straight ACC tournament games, and now they've won their first tournament game. I think it was since Fluke Girl. Really? Yeah, against Villanova. That, that they showed actually, they showed Fluke. They Girl. showed that clip. They always find a way to show. Fluke I wonder Girl. what Fluke Girl is doing these days. Yeah, she. I I hope that uh, she was able to like overcome her. She was everywhere right after that for like years. And I think maybe when Villanova won the championship, I feel like that was her redemption story. Yeah. Where it's like, okay, now I'm not going to get brought up all the time. Max, they made a good girl? No, I don't. But they made a, they put her in that commercial, basically. Yeah, no, they show her they every single a, tournament. They have a, a clarinet player. Yeah, they have a fake and, fluke. Girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But was, they but that was the first time NC State won a tournament game since then. Uh, they But that is, uh, like, it's just. This is what we watch for the 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 tournament. You don't know who's going to become the hero out of nowhere. I did try to try to get everyone on Samford. They were absolutely robbed at the end of the game against Kansas Kansas, where mm-hmm. they had a perfect block, called a foul, and ended up losing the game. But like you just that that's the beauty of the tournament. You don't know what team is going to pop up and have everyone talking about them. And now we have Oakland versus NC State. What, the winner of that game is going to be the talk of of the week leading up to Sweet 16 because it will be a great story either way. They're two very fun teams to root for, and NC State with DJ Burns, sexy red. That dude, he's a big dude, but he moves his feet. He's like a ballerina on his feet. He's a great passer, soft touch. It's you can't root against him, and then you can't root against Golki. So I don't know. Just take the over. Yeah. In the next game, I don't want. I want. There should be there should be a rule where two of like uh, the Cinderellas that have very fun players on them. If they both get matched up with each other in the second round, there should be you should be able to float one spot. Yeah. You float one spot because I don't want either of those two guys to go home. I want to get more of those dudes in the tournament. Um did you see uh there was a very, very funny quote after Arizona. Arizona beat the fuck out of Long Beach State. Yes. Uh very funny quote from the athletic director at Long Beach State. Who fired afterwards. Dan Munson. He fired Dan Munson. For their conference tournament. Dan Munson kept coming into work. Which kept winning. Also was very funny about it because Dan Munson had a great quote where he said the day after he got fired, he went into uh film study with his team and he's like, You see this closeout, guys? This is what gets coaches fired. Yeah. And they it's, all laughed and they're like, Yeah. It's that, great. That hits hard. So so the athletic director said the timing of his decision to part ways with Dan Munson was done with the hope that it might trigger the exact run that led the team on oh, this unexpected bullshit. trip to March Madness. Here's the direct quote from him. Ready? My belief and hope is that by doing what I did and the timing of it, they would play inspired, and that's what they did. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, oh, but it worked. Bullshit. That's bullshit. What a, what a piece of shit that guy is. Yeah, they, Long Beach put a little scare into Arizona for a minute there. We had a couple scares, but it was really just about Oakland and Kentucky. Uh, and then the other big winner of the day, I thought, was the Pac-12. Washington State beat Drake. Drake, now, this is just their MO. They get in the tournament. They get a lead at the end of a game, and then they just stop scoring and lose that game. The exact same thing happened to them last year against Miami. Uh, so Arizona, Washington State... And then we had, obviously, Colorado won on Wednesday night. And then we'll, I'm going to mention it again with Matt Jones, but Dana Altman, my most underrated coach in America, I love how he coaches basketball. Dana Altman and the Oregon Ducks, similar run to NC State, wouldn't have been in the tournament, win the Pac-12 tournament. Fun fact, Dana Altman is now 8-0 in first-round NCAA tournament games. Mm-hmm. He is such a good coach, and he has them going every single – like overachieving every single year – and so we have like Dana Altman, Izzo, Izzo yeah, did it, it again. Izzo did it again. Now it's going to be Izzo against UNC, which we talk about with Stanford Steve coming up in a little bit. Not to pat myself on the back, but just wait for that moment. Uh, but but if Michigan State can win too, then I think all the talk around Izzo is forgotten because he has done a masterful job of just getting to a point where he doesn't have any expectations in the tournament every year. 
and then he surpasses those expectations. And it's perfectly Izzo because he has two guards. Like his team has not played well pretty much all year, and but he has two guards that when they do want to play well, they're a nightmare for anyone. Yep, and that's what he does. And yeah, so it was it was a great day. I mean, like Tennessee took care of business too. Tennessee took care of business. Iowa State took care of business. Creighton had a little scare with Akron at the beginning of the game, but they took care of business. Texas, yeah, there was Texas took care of business. All the, Colorado State they caught Virginia. They got they get they got Cavid nineteen. That was that was actually more embarrassing for Virginia. Yeah, the fact that they scored fourteen points against Colorado State and were in the first half and were the laughing stock of America on Tuesday night, and then Colorado State beat them by twenty five, showed up to the tournament and scored eleven points in the first. And half. It, it makes it doubly worse for Cavaliers fans because they were so desperate for one team to lay a giant egg so that they could be like, see, we did belong in the tournament. We're taking all this heat. Other teams can have bad days, too. The one team that you couldn't have that happen to was the team that beat you yes. in Colorado State. Yes. We also had— Oh, uh, you called McNeese, too. Good good call on giving out the McNeese schedule. Yeah, the University of Women, Mississippi University of Women. Yeah, th th is that what it was? Yeah. Well, they're called, yeah, they're not McNephew. Yeah. They're McNeese. And McNeese. Biblical, stu biblical Studies. Biblical Studies. Yeah, they uh, they got absolutely whomped. Turns out you got to play a couple people. Gonzaga looked, looked damn good, and now we get a good— uh, Kansas Gonzaga blue blood matchup mm -hmm. in the second round. Also, shout out to Kane. I hand up. I was very wrong about that. Uh, I thought that they were. I mean, we the the talk of the seeding was that they shouldn't have been an 11 seed. They proved everyone wrong. All the bid stealers yeah. took care of business today. Yeah, Oregon, Duquesne, and NC State. Yeah, they were all hot. And uh, so that yeah, like they Duquesne. I I was hand up very wrong. They played lights out. They held on. It felt like BYU was going to maybe st steal it back from them, but they are a tough, tough team. Yeah, so the stat is that uh, number 11 seeds are 27 and 25 in the first round since 2010. Yeah. Which is pretty impressive. You said it. 11s are the new 12. Yeah, and then number uh, three seeds also dominate the six seeds. Number three seeds in the later rounds are twenty two and five. I guess you just don't want to be a you don't want to be a six seed. Yeah, that's the kiss. Six of seed. Well, because it kind of makes sense because a six seed usually is a team that was had flashes of being good, but probably faded at some point in their schedule. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's that weird. It, it's kind of what the five seed was for a long time. And yeah, I mean, six seeds had a very bad day. They went zero and three. Yeah, very bad. Yeah, very bad day to be a six seed. Uh, yeah, Texas Tech got absolutely worked by NC State. Uh, also, we should mention the Dayton comeback. Um, we also have a coworker who went to Dayton Dukes who was literally crying after the comeback. Now, Dayton was uh, the seventh seed. They were underdogs, but he uh, was. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they, were. they were underdogs. They were two point underdogs, two and a half point underdogs. Oh, happy birthday to Dave Portnoy. Uh, didn't realize that he just Max just pulled up his Twitter and he had the balloons. Dukes was crying though. Dayton was an incredible, incredible comeback. They basically what, what was like a twenty-two so, run, fifty-six to forty on the win probability. Nevada had ninety-nine point five percent chance. Jeez, mm -hmm. and Nevada scored four points the rest of the game. Seven minutes, crazy. I mean, it was an awesome day. I lost a lot of bets, but that's not what it's about. It's about having fun with your friends it's about the bets that you didn't <clears throat> make that would have lost yeah and when i say having fun with your friends that's loser talk for someone who doesn't win their bets because if i won my bets i'd be like it's about winning bets it was still fun it was still a fun day for i think the first time in four years i'm up after day one Congrats. i'll take that i'll take that that's a huge you win. just got to make positive steps yeah that's a huge huge win do we miss anyone um i think we hit pretty much all i think games. you guys hit all of it but i think this Kansas Sanford story is gonna just blow over because of the timing of it, but it was a it was bad egregious. Call. It was yeah, egregious. no, it was. And, shout and out they would have had block. numbers the other way yep. to yeah. take the lead. Like, yeah, that I was think they bad. made they made that call because he fell hard. That's it. Yeah, that's why they made the call. It was uh, shout out by the way to Sanford alum Devlin Hodges Duck. You remember yeah. him? The Steelers. I yeah. love Duck. Yeah, he's the, he's the only guy that I know that went to Sanford. Uh, that was that was bad. You have every right to be mad online. You have every right to go January 6th on the NCAA offices Yes, if you're Sanford. And I know you can say, like, oh, there's so many other calls. You shouldn't have been down 20. Yes, but in that moment, that's that's a bad one. Yeah, bad call. Bad. But also, Sanford was dead. They were, yeah. like, capitally, capital D dead for most of the game. And then they just put together this crazy run. And you look up, and you're like, oh, shit, this is still alive. Bucky ball. They just chuck Bucky threes. Ball, baby. And they and they press and they were just giving up a million points in the paint 
Because would you say that um, with some of the upsets, the bracket opens up real nice for JMU or Wisconsin? Mm, well, we haven't played our quadrant yet. I'm so. just saying. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'm just I'm I'm all optimism right now. Sure. I haven't kind of beaten out of me yet. Yeah. Um. All right. Before we do some picks for tomorrow, uh, we got to quickly talk about Shohei Otani. It's appropriate timing for it. Yeah. Yeah. So Shohei Otani, one of the weirdest stories that broke uh, Wednesday night. So the story goes, he went to the media and was like, my interpreter, I had to wire money to my interpreter because he was in gambling debt, four and a half million dollars. Yeah, so Otani and his representative talked to the media. So it was somebody that was, I don't know if it was his manager, but somebody that was there to tell the media like the official story. Right, so he he was like, the official story is my interpreter, I had to send him four and a half million dollars because he was in gambling debt. And then almost immediately after that, he's like, wait, no. He actually stole the money from me. Mm-hmm. I, jo- I was joking. Yeah. Because so, maybe it would look bad if you were like, my interpreter is four and a half million dollars in debt. And people were like, huh, that's weird. Your interpreter's four and a half million dollars in debt? And they were seen in the dugout of the baseball game, the MLB game, uh, like laughing and joking. The interpreter yeah. and Otani, after this statement had been released, and uh, they... It didn't look like somebody that had stolen four and a half million dollars. It looked like someone who was like, we should take Oakland money line. It looks like someone that was like, we got away with this. Yeah. So uh, there's a problem. There's a lot of problems. Um, One is I'm just I'm going to take Otani at his word. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say that the. Well, uh, we don't know his word because he doesn't have an interpreter anymore. Okay. Well, I'm going to take him at his representative's first word. Okay. Before he fired the interpreter. Yep. Um, Which is beautiful that he now doesn't have to answer questions because he doesn't have an interpreter. Yeah. So So the guy. And, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but the interpreter who makes what two hundred thousand dollars a year, correct, was four million dollars in debt. Correct. How would that happen? Because yeah. the only way it would happen would be if they were using a bookie that was willing to give that interpreter that amount of credit. Correct. If he makes two hundred thousand dollars a year, why would the bookie give him four and a half million dollars worth of credit? You're asking very good questions. It, it would be no different than if memes, there was a story that memes was $5 million in debt to a bookie. And mm-hmm. everyone was like, huh? I wonder whose money is. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, that so. Doesn't make sense. I'm just connecting some dots here. Uh, and baseball's got a big problem. Because big problem. Shohei Otani stands to make MLB hundreds of millions of dollars, if not more. Yep. Over the course of his career. He's playing in the biggest market. By the way, maybe that's why he moved to Los Angeles was because he loved betting on his team so much and he couldn't make any money off it uh, with the Angels. So he moved to the Dodgers. Yeah. So they could win some games and he yeah. could make some money. Also, uh, California doesn't have legalized gambling. They hmm. do not. Hmm. So, they, again, this was all on credit with an illegal bookmaker. And uh, it seems to me like baseball, given how much money they stand to make from Otani, really does not want to have to treat Otani like they would anyone. Can you imagine if it was a, a utility player? Yeah. That paid off four and a half million dollars? Yeah. Like, how fast would that guy be banned for baseball oh, yeah. for life? And let's just, let's do a hypothetical real quick. Just a quick hypothetical. Because mm-hmm. hypothetically speak, well, no, this part is real. Uh, newsflash, I like to gamble. Okay? Mm-hmm. Hypothetically speaking, though, if someone were to give me $700 million knowing that I like to gamble... I'd probably ask for it in little pieces, not all up front. Maybe a deferment, mm-hmm. because I know that I like to gamble, and I don't want all the money right away, because I like to gamble. Well, how pissed do you think Otani's interpreter <laughs> was if it was really him that was in debt? That's like, don't worry, I'm good for it. I got a big payday coming in soon. Yeah, we're about to sign a new contract, and then Otani's like, "Hey, man, yeah, we're not going to get that money for ten years." Yeah, it's like, fuck. We'll man. get a little bit. We'll get enough to to. You know, March Madness. Yeah, just get us through. Just get us through the NCAA tournament. We're fine. What do you say, Hank? It's gonna sound crazy, but four and a half million from for what he makes is also not that much. Oh yeah, for Otani. Right. Yeah, but for his interpreter. Yeah, no, that that's like, like his unit size isn't it for for all relatively speaking. Yeah, isn't crazy. I mean, you hear like you know like Floyd Mayweather bets a million dollars a game. It's like. That's that's eye popping, but then you're like, wait, but Floyd May- Mayweather makes like a hundred million dollars a fight. Mm-hmm. So my yeah, idea, for his interpreter, that's a lot. That's a big. That's a big number. My idea for Rob Manford is very simple. You just do the reverse Jordan on him, and you tell him he has to go play minor league basketball for four years. I like. What that. was he gambling on? Sports. 
That's what I want to know. So yeah, we, you, the the best case because if scenario, it was American sports, yeah, then it was definitely him because the interpreter was explaining to him American sports. How do you want to? Yeah, it? the the best case scenario I think for the uh, I mean, it was MLB different. is like it was somehow casino related, but I don't think it sounds like it is. No, and and the that's Bruno Mars situation. That's yeah. where that's where there's another problem is if. The only way that you could expect a bookmaker to give a guy four and a half million dollars with a credit to bet on if he makes 200 grand a year is if that guy is doing other stuff for you. Yeah. If that guy is giving you inside information that you would that he would know because he's inside a clubhouse every single day. Mm. Interesting situation MLB has their hands in now. Very interesting. Yeah. So that's it. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, this also all broke when he's overseas, right? Because they're, they started... Uh, yeah. the season in Japan? No. Korea. Korea. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see when he gets back. It's but, very, again, it's very funny because he's going to walk in and they're going to ask him questions. He's be like, I don't have an interpreter. Mm-hmm. He gambled too much. Do you think, the inter- <laughs> Hank, when you said, like, explain American sports to him, do you think he doesn't know, like, how to bet on basketball? His wife is a basketball player. Facts. She's actually a bucket. She is. With all due respect. I'd knock it out of the park. <laughs> but like I mean, football. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hockey. So we're gonna we're gonna find out a lot more. God, it would about rule this if Shohei Otani was betting on Maction. <laughs> <laughs> what if what if Shohei, Shohei Otani's like goddamn bowling green? What if Shohei Otani is an ice man? What if, what oh, if he just like if there's that there, up? If there's he there, trusts the data too much. Yeah. If they're sitting there watching, you know, NFL on a Sunday, the interpreter's probably explaining things to him. So the interpreter is the bad gambler? No, Shohei is the bad gambler. Right. But if it's American sports, then it's I think he probably knows how to Shohei. I think he probably watches football and knows how to yeah. bet on football. Allegedly. His interpreter slash Shohei. But yeah, there's gonna be a lot of lot of twists and turns in this story yes. as it ends up coming out. And yes. base baseball has painted itself into a corner as being like the ultimate, like high and mighty moral arbiter of all things good and evil. Yep. And you got Pete Rose. Pete Rose is watching this closer than anyone. Yeah. Pete Rose is like, what are you going to do to Shohei? Yeah. Yeah. And and all the steroid guys. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, but, yeah, we'll update as it goes along. I'm sure we'll have updates on Monday's show. Uh, all right. Should we do some quick picks before we get to Matt Jones? So, Uber Eats. This is the weekend for Uber Eats. I'm going to say it right now. This is the weekend for Uber Eats because when tuning in to all the March Madness March mania this weekend. Turn to Uber Eats for all your delivery needs. Uber Eats is more than just food from your favorite restaurant. I'm talking groceries, convenience items, and alcohol. Whether you need dog treats, peanut butter, St. Patrick's Day decorations, or beer, or maybe all four, Uber Eats can deliver almost, almost anything. Get grocery, alcohol, and everyday essentials in addition to the restaurant food you love. So in other words, get almost, almost anything with Uber Eats. Order now for alcohol. You must be legal. Drinking age. Please enjoy responsibly. Product availability varies by region. See app for details. Uber Eats. Get almost, almost anything. All right, what do we like tomorrow, boys? I got a simple one. I got a simple one for you. I have a Mega Max super lock of the tournament. Oh, Okay. okay. I'll let you guys go. First. I have a lock plus. Well, no, now you have to go. No, you guys go. No, you. Have no, to do go. your mega Mo- is it mega max than, super is it bigger lock. Bigger than a mega max lock of the tournament. No, mine's just a mine's just. Why a would lock. you do the main event before the undercard? Mine's a max plus. Yours but is bigger. Yeah. So you do yours first. I like yours. Texas, I like Texas A&M plus one. I think they're gonna they're gonna bother Nebraska a lot. I like the under in Western Kentucky Marquette. Ooh, Western Kentucky loves to run the floor, but they suck. They chuck. They are bad. They're a bad offensive team, but they... They I, take a lot of bad shots, yes. but sometimes they go in. Yeah, but I don't think they're going in this time. Okay. 158 under. I love, 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 love Purdue. Oh. Revenge. Yeah. I could see that. The UVA formula? They're yeah. not, yeah. They're, and what, what, didn't UVA win the next year? Yeah. yeah Remember, the next year, they were down at half to Gardner-Webb as the one seed. Mm. They ended up winning it, obviously, and winning it all, but they had a slow start. Again. Yeah. It's happening again. Max, uh, NIT? Uh, it's March Madness. I have UB, UAB oh, you plus said, you six were, and a half. You were all about the NIT a day ago. What yeah, happened? I'm allowed. Like, come on. I'm not. I'm allowed to have a little fun. You UAB happened. plus six and a half. What happened with the NIT? I think UAB is pretty good. <laughs> um, the Mountain West stinks. Mountain West loses every game. UAB plus six and a half. 
What happened to, to Nova? They lost. In the NIT? UAB is a pretty good program. In the They've opening the round of the before. NIT? There's no Jelly Walker this year. Were you guys at home? Pretty good squad. Well, at least at least losing in the first round of the NIT means that Kyle Neptune's going to get fired. No. Oh, I'll what? take Coach Cow. I would love Coach Cow. Max is just dealing with coaches he wants fired that won't get fired. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> now Neptune's got one more year on his contract. It's make or break year next year, but I think we're going to lose all our guys. Yeah, he's going to be a lame duck coach. Uh, okay, well, good luck to everyone. We have more picks coming with Stanford Steve. We're going to talk about the entire Friday slate with him. Before we do that, uh, Matt Jones is going to join us. Uh, we forgot to mention, Matt Jones has a great Netflix show out called uh, The Wrestlers. Go watch it right now. Support our friend Matt Jones. It's awesome. I watched it. If you're a wrestling fan, you got to watch it. Even if you're not. I'm not a big wrestling fan, but yeah. it's, it's awesome. It's compelling. Yes. Before we get to Matt Jones, today's One Take episode is brought to you by Visible Wireless. Ever wish you could call a foul on your wireless carrier for their hidden fees? I do. Then it's time to switch to Visible. Switch to Visible, the wireless company with nothing to hide, and get one-line wireless with unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon, just $25 a month every month, taxes and fees included. One-line wireless, just $25 a month, taxes and fees included. No hidden fees, no gotchas. Don't let hidden fees stop you from being a fan of wireless. Switch to Visible and save. Switch now at Visible.com. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com today. Go check it out right now. Our friends at Visible.com. One take episode brought to you by our friends at Visible Wireless. Go get it right now at Visible.com. Okay, here he is, Matt Jones. Okay, we now welcome on our very good friend from Kentucky Sports Radio. We've known him for a very long time. We hate to have to bring him on this show under these circumstances, but it is Matt Jones. Matt, uh, where do you want to start? What went wrong? Kentucky get you know bows out of the tournament in disgrace yet again, loses to 14 seed Oakland. Uh, you could just tell us where what you're feeling or where you want to start because I'm sure we have some follow up questions, but the floor is yours. Speak for Kentucky. You know, the last time you had me on your show was when Mitch McConnell got me kicked off the radio and I didn't have a job. <laughs> and I think this is worse. I'll be honest with you. I think this is. Uh, I think this might be worse. It's terrible. You know, lose to St. Peter's in Oakland two of the last three years. Um, and I think. Probably the end of the Calipari era. There's oh, a really good chance. Whoa. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I don't think it's certain, but I think a lot of the fans want that. Um, and it's just sad. You know, listen, you guys are fans of, of your teams when you really, really love something. And, and it's, it feels like the end of an era tonight. And that kind of sucks. Yeah. yeah, that is that is tough. Uh, his buyout is what thirty three million dollars to to yeah, it's a get lot. rid of his I don't, contract. I, it's, it's, yeah, well, it's not my. It's Portnoy's kind of money, not ours. But, right. Uh, but 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 they may have to do it because this fan base. I've never seen them this upset ever. Yeah. yeah. So um, I was reading some stats earlier that Kentucky has only won one NCAA tournament game since 2019. These are actually your stats that you tweet out, and that Kentucky has won one SEC tournament game since 2019. Though it's hard, it's hard to hear that and not be like what the hell is going on at Kentucky? Like, what is, how did it, how did he get to this point? Well, you guys were the first ones to ever put him on the hot seat. Yeah, but fair. we also I said mean, to like give you, him an extension. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to you hosting this summer. I hope you'll do it again. Yes, uh, yes. You'll have a lot, you'll have a lot to talk about. I think he's kind of gotten a little big for the program. I think he, his relationships here are pretty poor. He has no relationship with the AD. No relationship with the boosters, no relationship with the media. You know, you guys know I used to be pretty close with him. Uh, he does not like us now at KSR. It's just unfortunate because I think he's a good dude. But, you know, sometimes times end, right? Like sometimes you just got to say that's it. And I, I think I don't know if we're there, but I think we're pretty close. Yeah. So, so Cal has been very vocal in the last several years about how proud he is of his track record with guys that he brings into the program develops them, gets them into the NBA, and then gets them massive contracts in the NBA, his alumni, right? So that's kind of what yeah. he's hung his hat on. And he had a quote after today's game 
It says, it's going to be hard for me to change that, bringing in freshmen, because we've helped so many young people and their families that I don't see myself saying, okay, we're not going to include freshmen anymore. So I don't, with with a coach like that, I understand where he's coming from, but I can't see a fan base really having that message resonate with them if you're not also winning, right? So They, they hate that. The fans here hate that hate that he says, like, the draft is is the important thing, changing – like, everybody likes the draft. But, you know, I could sit here and go through the players he's had just in the last, like, eight or nine years. Shea Alexander, Devin Booker, Tyrese Maxey, right? Uh, you know, Kaysom Wallace, all these guys, Oscar Shibwe, all these dudes, they've won, and then they haven't won anything. And I think that Fox, Monk, Adebayo, all these guys, Jamal Murray. And, like, to have all those dudes and, – and think about all those guys I just mentioned. Not one Final Four. And that entire group, yeah. Ex- except, I mean, Carl, T- Devin Booker made the final four, but the rest of them, no final fours. I think that's, that's a lot. I think people are kind of tired of it. And then to say, he's not going to change. I mean, look, I will tell you when I saw Gunkel or whatever his name Gunky, was yeah. on Oakland, yeah. I thought of you two, because I thought those, you, you guys had to love him, right? Oh, oh 20, yeah. Real ham and eggs kind of hairline, guy. Yeah. Played D3 basketball and he goes out, he's talking trash, 30 points. But losing to dudes like that, when you've got the players Cal has, Dillingham and Shepard going to be top 10 picks, I think fans are just kind of over. Yeah, that that is the, the extra pain that Kentucky goes through because it's very rare that they don't have a more talented team and they keep having these disappointments. So let me ask you this. If Cal somehow stays, is there a fix? Because it to me, the biggest issue with Kentucky right now is that it's a lot of recruiting and not a lot of coaching. I've watched a lot of Kentucky basketball this year. There wasn't a lot of like set plays. There was a lot of guys who were really talented off the dribble. The defense never came around. He said he was going to do some tweaks. There were no tweaks. It felt like he was the last person on earth to find out that Oakland ran a zone and that Galky <laughs> could shoot from anywhere. So like to me, I'm just watching that game and I'm like, did Kentucky – did they plan anything for this game or were they just going to roll the ball out and say, we're better than you because it feels like that's what happens time and time again. So is there, if Cal says, you know, if he says in two weeks, I'm hiring the best assistant coaches I can find. We're going to get back to basics. We we have to, we have to actually run some stuff and, and, and teach these guys basketball that's winning basketball. Would the fan base be like, okay, maybe this is different. I mean, maybe, but first of all, he would have to admit that, which he won't. Right. I mean, he does. He believes that the way he plays is the way you should play. I mean, after the game today, he said we had a lot of freshmen do things they've never done before. But you watch the game. I mean, we they ran a, a zone, a little jump zone, and Kentucky couldn't get any shots open. I mean, listen, Oakland should have won by more. Yeah. They missed 11 free throws. I'll even say we got the good side of the whistle. Right. Like, I think we got some good calls. So it could have been worse. No, there's no assistant. He won't listen to him. You know, listen, how many 60, however many year olds, how many of those guys do you know that change? Yeah. The best thing, here's one of the things I like about the culture you guys have at Barstool. You guys have, you two are very successful. Dave is very successful. But you all are surrounded by people that are not, on your all's level in terms of like success, but you give each other a hard time and you listen to each other, yeah. right? And so like you will listen to people that might be lower on the food chain, but like you'll consider what they say. Cal's not like that. Cal is in charge. People can say whatever he wants. He's still going to do what he wants to do. And that's a good way to lose your grip on success. That's that's crazy to me because it's just, it's it's so nuts to be this coach who's been wildly successful and not like Saban is the perfect example. How many times yes. did Saban change what he did when the when he would he won national titles where he was running the football and playing great defense? Then linebackers got you know smaller and and people were spreading it out. He got Tua and all those wide receivers, and it was that shape shifting of like I will get with the times. Cal, like that that stat. I know you you probably know it, uh, you know, in the back of your hand. But like up until I think what is it, the LSU game. Uh, they hadn't hit a game winner in in forever because they literally just didn't. They ran the same play every time for no, a game winning shot, and it's like teams knew they had this. Thirty two shots until the Mississippi State game. They had thirty two shots, 
at the end of games to win and they had missed all of them. Right. Which which is like a crazy, which is a crazy stat. And then they hit the one uh, with Shepard this year. Saban's a great example because to me, Saban is an exact example of what you should do. Like Cal would never bring in a Lane Kiffin kind of guy to right. be an assistant. Like he would never do that. But that's what Saban, Saban is the most successful coach of all time, but he had the humility to say, look, I need help with this, right? I need to bring this guy in for modern offense. Cal won't do that. Um, listen, when dudes get a certain age, they do not change. Yeah. And the ones that do are special. Saban, um, Krzyzewski did that, right? So Krzyzewski yeah. was recruiting a certain kind of way. And then he goes, you know what? I got to go get the, the stars. I got to go get the, the star freshman. And he did. And they kind of took a lot of Cal's guys. Like, think about Zion. Yeah. Zion would have been a Kentucky player back yeah. in the day. Cal made K change. That's a That's fact. That's exactly right. He did. And now, and now Cal needs to change back because Jay Wright tonight said it the best. Because of NIL. These dudes are staying in college longer, and that's about to happen. Like, you're going to see good players stay in college for three and four years, and I just don't know if you can win with freshmen anymore. Mm -hmm. Because these – I mean, hell, the guy the, – two of the starters on Oakland were 24 years old. Yeah. We're starting three guys that are 18. That's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. So have you have you allowed your mind to wander yet? Have you thought who would look good in Kentucky blue? Oh, what, man. I'm, I'm going to throw a couple names out there. All right, let me hear him. And if we're talking buyouts, there's a guy down uh, in Alabama who just got a new contract with a massive buyout. But if you want to win, Nate Oates is a hot name. Mm. Yeah, but Nate Oates hadn't won anything, though. That's I mean, Nate I, Oates, I like, like that, like, Matt. He talks a, I, I like him. He's trash talking, but he doesn't win anything yet. Now, maybe he'll do it this year, but he had not won anything. I like that, Matt, because I, I was floating that out there to see if you if y'all were still Kentucky. Yeah. And you're still Kentucky. Y'all still Kentucky. Yeah, y'all still Listen. Kentucky. Yeah. What about hey Matt? Dude, what about Co what about Coach K? <laughs> what about get him out of retirement? <laughs> no, Matt. I mean, well, here's what they'll do. First of all, if Cal is gone, and I don't think that's certain, but let's say he was, the first thing they'll do is I know the first two people they'll call. They'll call Jay Wright and they'll call Brad Stevens, and they'll say, "Any chance?" Yeah. My guess is both of them would say no, but that's the first thing they would do. Yeah. And then I think they their next thing would probably be Scott Drew at Baylor would be who they would try to get. But I'll tell you, after Scott Drew, I would ask you guys, like, there's not an obvious choice. Yeah, there is. No, yeah, there Who's is. That? He Rick was, on, he was yep. on this show, and he said that he never should have left Kentucky. He said such nice things about How Kentucky. How about that? We still have Rick Pitino on. How did you not ask him about some of the stories I told on your all's show here? Well, about we, um, ago? we were very intimidated. We and we Hand also up. we 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 had it was the most that PFT and I like talked about an interview before doing an interview. We we're like, okay, this guy was nice enough to come in. We said a lot of he things. Was. Yep. We have to obviously own up to some of the things without getting into too much detail, which I think we did well. But we were like. The, we've done some interviews that we haven't aired where we screwed up by kind of being like it didn't go well right away and we're yeah. just like so we're like let's have a good interview here uh but yeah there, it was in our mind the entire no, time listen, i thought i'm kidding <laughs> you i thought you did a great job like people people want you to be jerks to people when you interview them and you can't like like it's hard to do that and I thought you guys I actually thought you made him seem very likable yeah, which I, yeah. Which, well which, he which is was kind of, he is matt we're rick Pitino guys now I wanted I wanted at least one down my leg though. I yeah. did. I uh, wanted one down my leg. I, yeah. I, I bit the fuck out of the inside of my cheeks yeah. at one point during the interview. Just like don't do a PFT. It went against everything in my nature and I hated it. But yeah, do you think people remember, by the way, how crazy that story is? Oh yeah. Like, do you do you but no, I mean like the he takes his equipment manager. Asked him to take the woman to get an abortion. I don't they recall fall this. in love. Yeah, this, on this the sounds way. like this sounds this sounds fake to me. We're Rick Pitino guys now. It sounds okay, like sorry. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't but they <laughs> fell in love at Subway over. No, a subway that's a beautiful no. place. Yes, that's a beautiful place. Different. You got you got Pitino derangement syndrome. Five dollar foot long. <laughs> I, listen, I actually found myself this year, guys, and you know what my Pitino history is. I find myself pulling for him at St. John's. I wanted him to make the tournament. He's, actually, yeah, he does a subway commercial. It's like Jared, but he's holding up the pants with a stain on it. <laughs> Listen, he Patino would be a great coach to go back to Kentucky. But yeah, I, I, I mean, it feels like Kentucky would would have the pick of the litter. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll throw out another name who's the opposite of Cal and the fact that I think he's a fantastic coach. 
uh, X's and O's. What about Eric Musselman, Arkansas? Like that's a guy. Uh, like it's even like little stuff. Like there's certain yeah. coaches. Like all right, so back to Cal and how he coaches. Like we saw today, Dana Altman, Oregon coach. I think he's one of the most underrated coaches in, in I agree college with that. basketball. I agree. He always agree. has teams overachieving to their talent level and and playing great tournament basketball. Throwing like the defense he threw at South Carolina today had them completely befuddled in the first half. Or like even Shaka Smart, even as uh, it drives me nuts that he's on the court. But like going back to that you know game when they played against Villanova, he drew up the perfect play at the end of the game that ended up not counting. But like those type of things, where it's like you have a coach that you know will steal you, you know at least a few possessions a game. When yeah. it comes to like out of timeout calls, when it comes to little throwing little wrinkles at them for a possession here and there, and that's the stuff that like Cal just doesn't do, and it would drive me nuts as a Kentucky fan. It it does some. I I think at this job though, this is like again. I know I don't know if people outside the state realize, but this, like you have to be a rock star to be at this job. Like this is a hard job in the state of Kentucky. This is what we do. I mean, you guys know you've hosted the show every year. Like it's it's what people live for. So you can't be like Dana Altman looks like an accountant. Yeah, you can't be an accountant. You have to be a rock star. You know, if Nate Oates had ever won. He's an example of a guy who has that personality, but he still hasn't won anything yet. So I think it makes it hard. This is tough. Normally, there's always the guy that I think, well, if Cal leaves, we'd get this dude. Yeah. Right now, I mean, Scott Drew, he's won a lot. He's kind of boring, right? Yes. Like, so like, do you get do you get Scott Drew? That's why I think they'll go hard if Cal leaves. And again, I don't know if he will. But Jay Wright and Brad Stevens would Jay be Wright two, would I rock. think. Really Jay Wright close. would be very good. Yeah, Jay Wright. What about TJ Otzelberger? Eh, I mean, I want this Kentucky. That's I the opposite of a rock star. He's a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to win. Give me, just give me somebody that will win. The fact that like nobody got upset tonight, but us, that also makes it stink. Like, yeah. All the favorites won except us tonight. Yeah, yeah. No, the 11 seeds had a nice showing, but you're right. Like it, it felt like all day we were just watching for that big moment. It's like, oh, here comes Kentucky shitting down their pants again. Uh, all right. So last question for you, Matt, uh, you, your show, which everyone should tune in tomorrow, what are you expecting in terms of uh, the anger and the calls? I would imagine there's probably people already on hold right now waiting to yeah. waiting to talk to you, but is it going to be one of those shows where it's just going to be people just calling in and ripping them apart? Well, I already did a post-game show a little while ago, and we had one person cry. Okay, uh, We had one person <laughs> very, very angry. We had a couple of people drunk hang, say, Cal, better get out of here. So there, I think it'll be more of that. Um, I don't think we're going to be very reasonable, to be honest with you. This is amongst this fan base as many things. They're not reasonable is not uh, one of them. I want to say one thing, and I want to do it on your show because people, your listeners need to hear this. These two dudes, I've known these two dudes now since before they were popular. I'm telling you. The guys you hear, I get asked this all the time about you all. Like, are those really nice guys? The guys you hear on the show, this is how they are in real life. They are kind to people that they don't need to be kind to. And I know they're funny and hilarious and super successful, but they're as good a guys as you hope they would be, which I can't say about everybody. And I just want to say that on your point. Well, we Thank you, Matt. That. I'm glad to hear the check cleared. Yeah. That's good. Well, let me ruin that for you. <laughs> let me ruin that for you real quick, Matt. Um, would you say the last time that uh, this fan base was truly happy with Coach Cal and Kentucky basketball was uh, March 28th, 2015, when you beat Notre Dame in the Elite Eight to punch your ticket to the Final Four oh, wow. at 38 tough. to 38 and 0. Would would that be the last time? You know, that might be right. I think we were pretty happy <laughs> up until we lost to Carolina in 2017, and I got sued by John Higgins and won the lawsuit in the Sixth Circuit. That's the last time maybe we were happy. Okay. But your Wisconsin team, I don't even want to hear it. It's it's still the thing I hold against you the most in life. <laughs> That's fair. It's it's probably my like one of my happiest moments, and it didn't end well uh, a couple days after that. But, but that, that's the Kentuckiness of it all, though. Like Big Cat's favorite moment is beating you guys. That's yeah, how high you guys the standards. Are Kentucky. Yeah, we didn't even win it. By the way, supposed to be Kentucky. I revealed the brackets on ESPN, and when I saw James Madison versus Wisconsin, I said on the ESPN show. It's the pardon my take matchup. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then when I left, I went into the restroom and somebody goes, 
I'm not going to say who it was, but somebody goes, maybe be careful talking about the part of my take, Matthew. And I was like, oh, come on. Everything's what everybody knows. Yeah. I didn't love it. Yeah. No. We're still, we're still, we still. We're, you know what? Rent free. Yeah. Rent free and ESPN said. Yeah. Um, Matt, I heard that one caller called in today and said that uh, you guys are now the new Indiana. How did oh, that, how did that no. make you feel? Listen, we are not that pathetic. We would never <laughs> wear those stupid striped pants, and we would never make their stupid rap videos. Indiana hasn't been good in 25 years, so I will not be insulted and be called Indiana. Okay, okay. last, right. last, last question. Uh, are you guys a football school now? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we got to go to a, be a, a playoff first, but I will say it's now become more of a debate. You mm -hmm. guys would love Mark Stoops, by the way. Oh, we've had yeah, him on. We've had him guy. on. Yeah, we've good had guy. him on. He's the best. He was at. Uh, and you would like Cal too. You're going to get Cal at some point, and you'll end up charmed by him. I think I Stoops was at at Bo Pelini's. Um, what tournament was that? It was his bocce tournament, his bocce Youngstown, tournament. Ohio. Yeah, we had we had Stoops in the back of the van. I remember that. You yeah. went to, you went to Youngstown. Yeah, so that's, uh -huh. that's it was a good great. place for you guys. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. All right, well, Matt. Thank you. Sorry again, uh, but you are the best, and uh, we can't wait to host Kentucky Sports Radio this yeah. summer. Thank you for coming on. Yes, I can't wait. To my fellow DraftKings guys, you all have a good night. Love all it. Right. Love Take it. Take care, Matt. See you, Matt. Before we get to Sanford Stevie, it's brought to you by Visible. PMT's one-take episode is brought to you by our friend. Draining a half-court buzzer beater to win the game? Not easy. Switching to Visible and saving on wireless with no hidden fees? Yeah, that's pretty easy. Switch to Visible, the wireless company with nothing to hide, and get one-line wireless with unlimited 5G data, Powered by Verizon. Just 25 bucks a month, every month, taxes and fees included. One-line wireless, just $25 a month, taxes and fees included. Visible is the wireless company with nothing to hide, no hidden fees, no gotchas, unlimited 5G data, powered by Verizon. Bench wireless with hidden fees and switch to Visible. Switch now at Visible.com. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. And now, here's Stanford Steve. Okay, we now welcome on one of our favorite guests, our good, good friend. It is Stanford Steve. You can see him on SportsCenter with SVP every night that SVP decides to work. Uh, he is one of the sharpest guys we know. What was your What was your record on game day this year? Not great. Oh like, no, four four and one in 2024. Four and one 2024. So we, yeah. we we're taping this on Tuesday afternoon. So uh, we're gonna run it Friday, and we we're like we need to have Steve on. And I think it's the perfect time to have you on because Thursday already happened. If you're listening to this, you got your teeth kicked in, you got absolutely <laughs> destroyed and Steve is going to help us navigate the Friday slate and hopefully win us some money. Uh, Steve, big thoughts though, before the tournament starts, uh, this might be bad if you recommend a team that is playing on Thursday and then loses and you say, oh, they could win the final four, but no. big overarching thoughts, your UConn Huskies look unstoppable. Uh, what else you got? That's that's the worry right there. Too much UConn. Too much UConn. Too mm -hmm. much UConn, and it's really, really scary. Also, Dan, I thought you had this in your big brain. You got to have your Final Four teams on Friday. Just just so you have an extra day of the tournament. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's you know? a very good point. That's and a very good point. Hopefully, uh, North Carolina beat the winner of Howard Wagner, because all my other Final Four teams are playing on Friday. That's okay. smart. So no Tennessee, no uh, – who's the other one? Maybe Iowa State, not a believer? Um, No. Wh no. What futures not. do you have? Do you? I know you, you probably have a bunch of futures. What do you got? I have UConn all the way back at the beginning. I think it was 18-1. to 1. Ooh, you got me uh, trumped. I, I have 14-1. Uh, UConn a couple weeks ago to make the Final Four, plus 125. Okay. Um, I'm still shopping around for a Duke not to make the Sweet 16 because that's even money. I like that. I um, was hoping that'd be a better price, knowing the teams that they're in a little pod. But I'm sure we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Little, but um, no, I was I was solely based on UConn. Uh, I did not. I didn't buy any of the Houston. I, I'm just um, the Purdue factor uh is obviously everybody's feel good story except yours dan yeah so um i do have something in me, myself rooting for them but yeah we're pretty stacked up on uconn and now it's pretty scary how much or i should first of all how good they are but then again the belief because now they are the ultimate one seed last year they were a four and uh you know i thought they had i did i think it was right when titus did it uh we were talking about them for the national title so 
it's uh, it's been a storm brewing. You guys have had Hurley on. There's no messing around. I think he's a master motivator in what he does. And I could see his motivation for every step of the way because this is the one thing about the tournament. And, you know, right away, it's UConn has the toughest road, right? UConn's bracket's unbelievable. Same thing on the women's side. Caitlin Clark's bracket's incredible. Okay, I understand you see the teams in the bracket. But on the bottom, they can only play one team. Right. So whoever comes out of that bottom, and a lot of people are saying, you know, Illinois or Iowa, that's going to be over. Uh, hopefully both those teams moved on. Um, but they only could play one of those teams. Same thing with uh, San Diego State and Auburn or UAB and Yale. Like th- They could only play one of mm-hmm. those teams. So I, I don't look at the, the – they're not playing the whole bracket. They, they play whoever's on the line in front of them, and that's why I don't think it's as tough a walk for UConn. And the biggest factor of all that no one brought up is they're playing in Brooklyn – and in Boston, I know Connecticut's in the middle of them. Yeah, you yeah. know, like it's home games. They're and, home and games, I, and all my friends can be as bitter and evil and just flat out mean from Connecticut as possible, and that's all they're saying to themselves. Like that, they, they can't wait to get to the gym. Well, you have uh, to have something to complain about. It's a very nice thing that they have like yeah. built in. You can get mad about that until until you start playing the games, but then the way the tournament always shakes out, you can't. Like, you can't predict who's going to win each game. So no. who knows if they're going to actually have to play two of those tough teams. I, I believe in bracket pools, this will be the lowest score or least amount right ever. Oh, ever. Oh. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Ever. I, I, ever. I, I, do, I, I, think, I, I think you're better off of, of, of getting out of team and, and riding that thing with a future or, you know, betting to make the Sweet 16. I think this bracket pool, I think it's impossible. Yeah, Max's mic is on, so we just heard Sorry about that. Sorry do you ever do that, that. by yeah, mistake, yeah, Matt, Steve? Yeah. Do you ever talk during SVP's show? <laughs> when he's doing, like, one big yeah. thing, and he's getting real sentimental about something, and then you're in the Hot background, Mike. you're like, my yeah, at least six on Mississippi State. Yeah. My producers do a good job at Bristol of if something serious is coming up to get in my ear. Have yeah. you so, ever, uh, when that. when Scott's doing a monologue, have you ever, like, gone on a monitor and just typed in Sydney Sweeney on Twitter <laughs> no. and started scrolling through pictures while <laughs> they're trying to introduce the show? That's is not that, what happened. Does that ever happen? That's not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that happened here we Here's, were looking for topics it was she was number one trending thing on twitter i wanted to see what was going on he's doing his job happened yeah. to be happened to be a picture of boobs yeah uh, hey it happens it Good happens thing, you know hey well, live the, sometimes the one thing about uconn that uh makes me nervous because i also bet him in december uh rico bosco called him the 96 bulls so that pretty much ends UConn's run right there. That that's a whole another pod if we're going to bring up that guy. <laughs> yeah, he right. uh, just out. you're just putting the mush all over them. Yeah, I'm the, just wondering who, he, who PFT who's he going to get a hat from after a Sweet 16 run, and that's going to be his his team. Yeah. All of them, probably yeah. ISIS. <laughs> yeah, He's probably. Oh, well, he does. Probably going to be rocking pictures. a rocking a Putin hat. Yeah, he does have oh. some pictures. All right, so Steve, you want to talk about our game? You yeah. want to rip off the band-aid. Your pod, your pod. I'm including all the guys. Yeah, yep. because you are a Duke fan. Uh, yep. I. So I said it on Wednesday, and I'm not being, I'm not just doing this just to like guard myself. I think this is a very bad matchup for Wisconsin. I'm very nervous about this game. They don't defend the three well. James Madison hits the three well. Uh, what What's your take, unbiased take on this matchup? All right, I'm going to fast forward. Uh, I have Wisconsin in the final four, Dan. Oh, oh my God. I like it, Steve. Good pick. Why? Great think, pick. So you think that what happened in February doesn't count? They found their form again because that really was, they were two different teams. Correct. I think I think they really found their form against Maryland. That helped because uh, you know what that rivalry has been yeah. for so long <laughs> that they found themselves. And I'm at the ACC tournament, and I'm I'm not with uh, anybody. And I just see the score, and I'm like, oh lord, yeah, forty points. Like this is put the phone down. Yeah, uh, it actually was straight. it actually was bad because I like it when Wisconsin beats Maryland by a little bit, so then I can get Scott really like he gave up in the first ten minutes. And one of my favorite things to do whenever Wisconsin, like you said, all-time rivalry, Scott loves being in the Big Ten, is whenever Wisconsin plays Maryland and Wisconsin wins, uh, you know, usually be like 9 o'clock at night, I'll FaceTime Steve knowing that he's sitting right next to Scott and just be like, talk about the game, knowing that Scott's just getting so upset next to him. I believe this year my reply was, not happening tonight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I didn't was, call this year because the Kohl Center refs came through. Yeah, and yep. They were calling some Madison whistle. Yep, the Madison whistle. But all right, so you what, you like Wisconsin the Final Four? I do. 
I do. I love what I've seen from them. I think Storr is an absolute difference maker. Um, Chucky healthy is is good. I mean, to to withstand what they had to do against Purdue, Dan. Yeah. And and you watched them. You guys. I mean, I, I checked in on the on the live stream. You guys watching that game, and I get it. You know, you had to do it what three times this year. It is. I sort of take. Edie's side though because he is Shaq no one knows how to defend him he gets shit that that guys just don't get and it is so different because he's so big yeah you know it's funny I got three little girls at home and whenever they're on it's like it's oh my god there he is again like they just they're enamored with how big he is and I just think you know he's he's he is that good I, I give the kid a ton of credit um for, for what he withstood, he got his foul shooting better. He's in way better shape this year. You could just see that. But anyway, Wisconsin, I just I, – the team's been through a lot, man. Like, they got seriously humbled in February. Yeah. You lose to Michigan? Yeah. Like, like that's that's as bad as it gets. Yeah. And I, I think there – I mean, there's been past instances with Wisconsin basketball teams and stuff off the court, whether the locker room likes each other. But I genuinely feel this team has the goods. They're as versatile – as any of these Wisconsin teams, maybe even more versatile uh, because of the athleticism at the guard at the guard spot than the team that lost in the national championship. Yeah, uh, I know that team had pros, but like what you want in this day and age with three point shots and inside presence, uh, you know, you mentioned the perimeter defense. I get it, but if you're if if James Madison's going to make thirty threes, then no, no, they're going to be anybody in the country, right? Maybe anybody in the world. Um, but I I like the offensive standpoint. Store could get a bucket at any single time. Uh, Hepburn is is the same way, and that opens up a lot of stuff. Now, do I feel confident? No. It's, yeah. It's 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 a it's a five. Um, you know, going to the final four, but I just felt Houston um is is beat up, man. They they are not what they were at the beginning of the year. I think they got their hands full. Uh, I have a And M winning against uh, Nebraska as much as I love Nebraska ball. And is Jake in there? He Jake is. is yeah. in there. Hey, Did Steve. Jake go to the Vermont game Sunday? No. Saturday, no. When's the last time he didn't go? I was at the championship game last year. I know. And so then was... the year before, right? No. Okay. Oh. Okay. I thought you were more loyal. The uh, but, but, <laughs> Wait, but, uh, you, you have, just to, just to clear it up, you have Wisconsin in the Final Four playing against Purdue? Um... If you're rooting for Big Cat Sadness, that's that's oh, not a bad way, way to go. Oh my god. Yeah. No. Uh Tennessee. although the happiness of beating Duke would kind of That's true. You get that. I, I, I listen, Steve, I, I I like that you uh think that we found something in it. yeah, I mean the the Big 10 tournament like the the thing with Wisconsin is if they can hit their threes, everything mm -hmm. opens up. You saw yeah. it with in the Northwestern game when AJ Store hits one or two threes, no one can guard him off the dribble. And then when you have no to one. come out and like even Crowell hitting a top of the key, you know, key three, yeah. that all opens up. Klesman can obviously get hot, but I just, I just, I, I'm worried about James Madison just because I just, I, I totally get it, Dan. Yeah, I, I, I get it, and that's and that's the kickers. I, 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 I went to see JMU the night before we uh, PFT and hung out um at that great university and they are they're as different a team because they just absolutely violate the three-point line right and your recipe for a tournament upset everybody loves that and they got purple and people love that so people love bracket. purple people love purple. Do people love purple people love purple okay yeah I'll, I'll buy that but what about so um jmu hasn't really played in big gyms jake was talking to me about that earlier uh they they played at michigan state obviously does that have mm -hmm. anything to do? Like, are the, is the moment going to be too big for these Dukes playing in Brooklyn? No, it's about Big Duke's energy. That's 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 the biggest thing here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And it, the the lighting at the Barclays is always off to me. I mean, that A ten tournament is as dark a backdrop as possible. Uh, so no, I don't pull. I don't worry about the. I do worry about the rims. These rims are brand new. They bring them in for. It feels like every single pod. Uh, they're not, you know, what the Nets play on. Hopefully, we, I was hoping you were going to get those because they're probably soft for what the Nets shoot uh, on a nightly basis. But no, it's it's a it's a real interest. It do it does feel too public to me. Okay, yeah, for, so for for the twelve five, everybody loves the twelve five. I get it. Um, I like looking more towards down for upsets, but I, I get everybody's withstand. It, it's going to be a fantastic. It might be the best game of of the first round. Ooh. Uh, so it's, it's, it's more, my, my, my thing is just more inclined to what's, what's, what's the bet. 
for all four guys yeah. involved. You mentioned the bet, so it sounds like you've got some ideas. I don't know. We haven't we haven't sat down and talked about the stakes of the bet yet. Here's uh, my problem. I'm sure there will be something. Here's my problem. So when we bet, like we bet the Commanders Bears game yep. Thursday night football this year because both teams sucked and we're like, who cares? <laughs> yeah. When 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 we're talking about the tournament or playoffs, like I won't even bet the game because it's like I'm just all fandom in it. You know what I mean? What are you gonna say, Max? Uh, what about like an NBA playoff series where? Well, you guys bet that. Oh, I'm so talking bad. about myself. I'm talking about myself personally. Like I care so much about the Badgers in the tournament that like there's already so much at at stake that like humiliation of losing in the first round sucks. Humiliation of losing to Duke would suck. Humiliation of Jake, like, you know, being like, oh, I'm kind of rooting for Wisconsin against Vermont. Like, I, I hope you guys have fun. That would suck. So yeah, there's like no, that's the worst. there's nothing that could be, it's just torture is I, just waiting I, for me on the other side. Very simple for you, Dan. You're in the best position of anybody. Oh, I think I'm in the worst. No, because you just throw in a James Madison money line bet. <laughs> And then when it happens, you just tweet it out and say, life's oh, fulfilled, I'm good. You True, win money, you friend. can win money off it. I could it. never yeah. bet against my yeah. team. I could never do uh, that. But what, 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 what is wrong with what's you? The, what is wrong with you? How much would you pay? How much would you pay to you know go. that Wisconsin was going to advance? 50K. 50 th yeah, there you go. And then JMU hits, you get... What, what's that one? Is what's that line, line still that? five? <laughs> probably That's another... A nice money probably, line. probably 100 to beat Duke. If I could just pay yeah. for them to win yeah. the national title. Yeah, then you're like a booster. I would pay a million dollars if they won the national title this year. I have no problem. Okay. Yeah, I would be like, I could just I could just be happy for the rest deal. of my life. Oh, deal? <laughs> you're going to make it done? Uh, we, we've talked it. about... I, I, I will say... Do you want to pay so someone like, This is what worries me about Vermont against Duke is Jake not being at the game. Like, he went last year, he was all in, and now, like, kind of the shine is off of Vermont. Everybody's saying... This isn't as good a team as Becker has had. They're still going to be solid. They play great defense, and all the pressure is on Duke. This is when I really get worried about. This is when the Mercer happens. This is when Lehigh happens. It's when they're on the four line, and that's that's what scares me. They're as talented as anybody. I just haven't seen that angst. Uh, a little more emotion would be nice. And that's what worries me about the Dukes. We've talked about doing some sort of bet where me and Big Cat meet in the middle in terms of our weights. Um if one person, so I, I'm not going to ask Big Cat how there are three things you don't ask: a woman how much she weighs, a <laughs> uh, person how much they make, and Big Cat how much he weighs too. Yeah. Um, but Exploding. but the the loser Stop. should have to come to the other person's weight. <laughs> like a, a, in, in a calendar year, like what if I had to put on like 50 pounds, <laughs> just get fat as fuck? <laughs> it would be funny. It would be funny. What do you weigh now? It uh, I haven't honestly. It could be anything. I haven't weighed myself in like a year. Loser has to go to two ten. Loser goes to two ten. I, I got. I got way better. You got. You got four guys, and you got the four teams. Max has to pick a guy who he's going to back. Okay. The winner of this pod gets to pick one of the losers and shave or cut his hair in the style that he wants. Oh man. Hmm. So, the, but I'm gonna have to get odds. Like Jake and I yeah. would have to get odds on yeah. that. Yeah, twelve point no. underdogs. We'll no. take us something. I, I was thinking you said Max has to back one of us, and if they lose, Max has to do the punishment. You no, the person who wins <laughs> could, pick, could pick him. Oh, could okay. pick Max him. is in the pool. Yeah, yeah. I like this. this yeah, is save that ponytail. He's got to okay. back somebody. <laughs> Max has so to. That's the first thing. Max has to come to the forefront. Yeah, Max has to pick a perfect bracket in this quad, and if not, he gets punished. Yeah, I liked it. Oh yeah, this yeah. is the Good one idea, time Steve. that I should have nothing to do yeah. with any punishment. <laughs> Good idea, Max, Steve. That is not your style to yeah. not be part. Of it. Yeah, You're ready to learn mullet, buddy. Great All the idea. Time. We'll get back to San Francisco in a second. Quick word from our friends at Visible. PMT's one take episode is powered by our friends at Visible Wireless. Draining a half court buzzer beater to win the game. Not easy. Switching to Visible and saving on wireless with no hidden fees. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Visible is the wireless company with nothing to hide. Switch to Visible and get one line wireless with unlimited uh, 5G data powered by Verizon, just $25 a month. Every month, taxes and fees included. One line wireless, just $25 a month. Taxes and fees included. No hidden fees, no gotchas. Bench wireless with hidden fees and switch to Visible. Switch now at Visible.com. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. 
Now back to Stanford Steve. All right, so uh, uh, other games on Friday that you love. Yeah. I, you mentioned Texas A&M. I love Texas A&M in this game. Yeah. I think their guards are going to ca- cause Nebraska problems. I think they're going to get they're going to slow it down. They're going to get it like nice and dirty because Nebraska when they go when they go nuclear, it's fun to watch. But I think they can bother them. Mm. I, I totally agree. I love uh, what I saw from A&M uh, against. Um, Tennessee in that tournament and just the wherewithal. I think they won six or seven, uh, you know, coming in when, when all the pressure was on them, they were, they were, they were out, they were outside the bubble and really got it together. Uh, that the intensity that, that the Nebraska A&M game is going to be a fun one. Yeah. Um, you know, with Nebraska being back in the mix, they play a fun style, take the over in that game. Uh, it might be the highest over on the board. Uh, or maybe that's no Alabama teams. Charleston. Oh, okay. Alabama Charleston's at like one seventy three really? now. Yeah, one seventy three and a half. Oh wow, that's getting a little crazy. It's getting a little crazy. You got to play yeah. a perfect game for one seventy three and a half. So, what other bets on Friday I, have you circled? Uh, recency bias. I, I'm known to be a customer of that. I have it probably definitely with uh, with Wisconsin. I like New Mexico. Uh, I, I really like. I mean, Dent is the guard that mostly takes care of the ball. He didn't even play in the in the Mountain West title game. And they did it with with Masburn Jr. in in house. Uh they were spectacular. That's what you want. They're the perfect mix. You got a Patino in there knowing that, you know, son probably knocked out the dad uh when they got an automatic bid, but I think New Mexico is playing as well as anybody. Uh they, I mean, their ability from the three-point line, they got some young bigs that are good. They'll be tested against PJ Hall, Clemson you know, is is not going to get picked because of how bad. I mean, I was there against BC. They were they were pathetic. Yeah. Um. And and you can't expect them to come out with that after knowing how close they've been to the tournament and now that they're in. But I do like them. I mean, they're an eleven. They're favored. Uh, I think they're. I, I believe they're the better team. I really would like to see New Mexico and Baylor in the second round. That's that's a fantastic uh, game. I, I, Jake, would you rather have Vermont playing Duke or Auburn? Because I'm thinking of like Yale and Vermont in the same category. I'd rather be playing Duke right now, just the way the two teams are playing. Yeah. Uh, Auburn could not – they can't be better than they were. Yeah. This past they, – they, they just can't. Um, and Titus brought up a good point on Wednesday. Auburn is does playing that. incredible, but they also didn't have to play the top three teams in the SEC. Correct. They didn't have to go through Tennessee or Kentucky or Alabama. They you know, And it's no offense to the SEC, but their run, they, they did beat – two what two out of three tournament teams in florida and uh, mississippi state yeah but still it's a little bit different than having to go through that gauntlet yep they beat and a&m too in the championship right no they beat florida oh, yeah they beat florida they beat florida and yeah. florida's a team i absolutely loved coming in before the injury i i, re- I honestly thought they could have won a national championship um i still think they could do some damage uh i thought they got a tough draw with um Playing the winner of the the playing game, and then you know Marquette's sitting there. Marquette's a team that scares me because of how valuable and how good Kolick is. Uh, it feels like Kentucky's way too public for me. Um, just knowing how many people have picked them to go to the Final Four, uh, Grand Canyon is really interesting. Uh, totally different style of play that they're going to play against St. Mary's, and, um, and the games in Spokane. I, it feels like both those fan bases are there. You know, Grand Canyon's done a great job of creating a great home atmosphere wherever they go, where it feels like in in um, the southwest of of the country. Uh, but I, I see I would pick Grand Canyon in that one. Uh, St. Mary's uh, the Jefferson injury has been huge for them. It really hurts them um, as far as defense, and that's what you need. Uh, tie on the kid for Grand uh, Grand Canyon is a pro. Uh, if you haven't seen him, I, I think he's he's going to be a name uh, that you're going to know for sure. Alabama is an absolute shambles uh, crapshoot. Like I, I don't, I Charleston. See, here's the deal with with a Charleston, even a UAB and a Vermont. Like those teams, I don't think they're as good as they have been in years past. But yeah. they 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 do a good job of play, you know doing what makes them successful. And obviously, if you can make threes against Bama. You're going to be in it because all they do is 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 shoot threes and layups and try and block your shot. So that that's an interesting matchup. I would side with Bama winning. I, I could see myself taking the points uh, with College of Charleston 
in that one. I, I should have mentioned, by the way, I Auburn did beat South Carolina as well, which is, so they beat three tournament teams, but they didn't yeah. beat Kentucky and Tennessee and uh, you know. Uh, was the, the big dogs. Yeah, the big dogs. What about Northwestern? So I don't have the, the spread pulled up in front of me. We're in Illinois right now, so it's not on our sports books. Uh, but... Last I saw was FAU minus two and a half. Okay, so I like Northwestern. So and I. My analysis is twofold. Real in-depth shit here, okay? One, Boo Booey is fun to say, and he's fun to root for. He's a good player. Boo Booey. Really? You're going to want to say that name a lot. Mm. Um, number two is a lot of chatter about Dusty May. Yeah, a lot of yeah. chatter. A lot of chatter about... His, his next destination maybe going up to Kentucky somewhere. Mm. Uh, I I like Northwestern in this game. I guess they are true underdogs because a lot of these seeds we we're talking about earlier you yeah. get to the higher seeds they're actually favored by Vegas. But um, I like Northwestern. It sounds like you like them too. I do, I do. Just because of how much everybody has jumped on this, UConn has all the Final Four teams from last year. Well, if FAU was that good, they would I thought they got overseeded. I don't think they should be an eight seed. Uh, ever, obviously, everybody knows the story of what they did last year. Nobody capitalized on the opportunity that they got last year more than them getting to play fairly Dickinson in the next round. Uh, I thought really that got themselves going uh, towards their final four run. But it, it, FAU just feels way too public to me. Uh, I still think North, they, they're another team. I, I really like Northwestern when they were fully healthy, and now they got two injuries. But I, Boo Boo is fantastic. Uh, I, I think Northwestern will make enough outside shots, uh, and I like being on the other side of the public in that one. So I do have Northwestern yeah, playing UConn. You guys always talk about uh, fading the public. I know you talk about it a lot in college football season. Uh -huh. Is the public stupider in football or in basketball in, in the college game? I feel like with the bracket it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because it's, it's really, like, really centrally focused. Um, like you, you feel like, don't you feel like, you know, everybody's underdog picks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like that, that's, that's, that's the, that's the good part of the, of the days leading up is you, is you really, Oh, you like, Oh, I got it. You like James Madison too. Got it. Mm -hmm. Heard that. Heard so that. They, they get talked up the, the, those teams, certain teams get talked up to a point where like, it feels like everyone's on this team. Yeah. And I also just think in terms of like fading the public, you can't just fade the public. That's impossible because the public does win, but uh, whenever you have events that have a massive amount of like, mm -hmm. I don't want to say mm -hmm. casuals, but casuals gambling, it definitely changes the dynamic. No doubt, no doubt, and it's it's and like I said, I'm I'm caught in it with Wisconsin in the Final Four with my the the hardest thing to do projecting and betting in sports is to forget what the team looked like their last time out. Yeah, right. And they lost. Wisconsin did, but they were fantastic you know, in, in what they did. New Mexico was as good as they played all year. And it's hard to, and, you know, that New Mexico Clemson, I mentioned it before, that's the, there. there's not a bigger difference of perception of teams with how hot New Mexico is and how not good Clemson looked in their last game. So I do feel uh, like that, but I, I always have an 11 going to the Sweet 16 and, and New Mexico is mine this year. Oh, Okay. Um, any upsets? Any one or two seeds that should at least be on be on the Steve alert? I think Houston, Houston, just because they're not healthy and and the way they play, with just you know getting up under you defensively and making everything so hard, and not being an up tempo team at the same time, gives me a notion that teams can hang around with them. And A and M has guys that can score some buckets, uh, and and so does Nebraska. So that that I think Houston has the toughest matchup uh, when it comes to second round games for the one seeds. North Carolina, um, never mind. Cut that. No, you could say that. No, because we, I mean this will be Saturday preview too. So if North Carolina is playing Mississippi State or Michigan State, that I, that's the next that's the next toughest to me. Yeah, because I I think people will be shocked. So if Michigan State wins their first round game, mm -hmm. I think people will be shocked when that line comes out and it's like. Double digits? Full, no, I think it's going to be way less. I think it'd be like uh, North Carolina so. favored by like five. No, it'll be at least seven. You think so? Yes. Okay. All right, no we'll doubt. make a bet. We'll make a wing bet on that. I like nice. that. Betting on a bet. Yeah, we're betting on a bet. Betting on a bet. So I have anything under seven? Yeah. Okay. And seven's a push. Seven's a push. Seven I max on, wins. I went on seven. I'm the guest. No, well, you said te you said double digits. <laughs> So I think seven has to be a push. Seven and a half, you get it. I'm just making sure you were listening to me. Yeah, yeah. Time. No, I'm listening. I'm listening. What What is the uh, 
March Madness setup look like for Stanford, Steve? Because you don't go to Vegas. You go to Vegas for conference championship. Uh, did that. Uh, ACC was here, so I did that. Um, I will split some time here at uh, the Great Cleveland Park Bar and Grill in D.C., um, watching games there with all the TVs. And then my setup is really good at home. I, I got I got four TVs uh, ready to go, so they will be on constantly, and I will be on the couch. I do like to watch a lot of these games by myself. I, I it, it's 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 the fantasy football mentality. I think going out to watch NFL regular season games now is is um, what do they call? Um, New Year's Eve is a JV holiday now. Yeah. I feel like that's a JV way of going because all anyone is yelling about is their fantasy team. Yeah. It, it just drives me nuts. But I do like to get around the energy. So I'll, I'll do that Thursday. And the night sessions, I'll be at home uh, locking in uh, with all the TVs going. and uh, Only you know, four TVs? That's all I need. Do you have a? Uh, you guys have a fifth. NIT is going to be play. I guess it doesn't play exactly. Oh, Saturday they play some NIT games early. What do you think about Villanova's chances in the NIT? Uh, it depends if they want to play. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. What do you think it'd be funny if they finished second? That would be the best. Would you watch a Matt, Max live stream of the NIT game? I'm trying to get him to live stream. No, no one wants to watch that. I would. Would. What about a personal feed just for me and you, Steve? Would you watch it? I, I I could I'll, I'll I'll FaceTime in a couple times. Okay. Yeah, I think just you just describe FaceTime. Just yeah. Max just FaceTime Big Cat while you're watching. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine with that. Put him up on Cameo. Yeah. Love, love do oh, yeah. Cameo. Only Monetize fans. It. Oh, we yeah. should put Max's uh, Max watches only fans. Oh. <laughs> just get only fans feed of Max watching all his sports Why? teams. Just him being sad. We could get so much money and from just that. Just give out a cell phone number. People yeah, love yeah, to check a, in with him. That's a good point. PMT's One Take episode is brought to you by our friends at Visible Wireless. Ever wish you could call foul on your wireless carrier for their hidden fees? Then it's time to switch to Visible. Switch to Visible, the wireless company with nothing to hide, and get one-line wireless with unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon, just 25 bucks a month. Every month, taxes and fees included. One-line wireless, just $25 a month. Taxes and fees included. No hidden fees. No gotchas. Don't let hidden fees stop you from being a fan of wireless. Switch to Visible and save. Switch now at Visible.com. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. Do that. Do you have, Steve, do you have a Fitbit or like an Apple Watch? I do. Yeah, I want to see what your steps are going to be like on Friday. Like if you're just posted up okay. in your basement. They were great Saturday, I'll tell you that. What do you think the over-under would be on Saturday? Saturday, I got more time. Uh, because the games start later, so I, I'll, I'll make sure to get something. I'll get. I've been trying to do the five miles a day, BFT. Really? Yeah, yeah. So uh, driving? Not driving. There's uh, majority jogging. There's been some. We've been upticking on the running. Um, but uh, yeah, we've been we've been trying thirty five miles uh, last week. So wow, you Steve walks. <laughs> yeah, Steve wh- wh- walk I, run as your as a protector of Scott Van Pelt. And you've done a very good job of that. You are his, uh, like, bouncer. Charles Oakley. Yeah, it's Charles Oakley. Were you, were there, was there any hesitation having him do Frank walks? No. Okay. You didn't no. think that Frank was just going to throw him into the reflecting pool? No. No, no, no. Because fr- Scott deserves a lot of credit. He is uh, an everyman. I, I, when we were setting it up, I was like, Scott, will you do this? He was like, no problem. I was like, all right, who should I contact to get it, your schedule set? And he's like, just have him text me. So Scott was texting with Jenks and maybe oh. Frank. And, like, I don't know many guys in Scott's shoes that would be like, yeah, just throw him my number. And he was in. He was all the way in. There, there's there been a long-lost love, I would say, all along. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know? I agree. They they and did find some common ground there. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, not, a, there's not a better – I mean – Frances was walking and feel felt like on the street during garbage day. They had garbage trucks going around, and Scott was down by the reflective pool. It was it was, it was gorgeous. Yeah, there, there was a second when Frank started talking about vaccines that you could see the look on Scott's face where he's like, "What is, <laughs> what have I gotten myself into?" <laughs> <laughs> he's great at changing the subject. Did a, a wonderful job with that. Uh, BFT, I never got back to you after game day at JMU, like. Being at game day every Saturday and then like doing like we did, we left the office, um, FaceTimed a couple of friends to check in that got mentioned on the show. Yeah. And then we made our way to the tailgate and the game. And I would rank JMU as 
the biggest amount of drunkness I saw walking from the office to the stadium. Yeah, like, do yeah. You they, remember how messed up people were? Yeah, they got after it, and it was also like it a, was one o'clock in the afternoon. It was a very special <laughs> occasion too. I I expect that like a, a big state school, like an LSU, probably the uh, the average BAC over the course of a a season's worth of Saturdays, probably higher. But since it was college game day day and the stakes were so high, oh. it was like just a big, it was like, like you said, St. Patrick's Day for yeah. for Central Virginia. It was wonderful. Yeah. Um, the, the amount of grown women we asked for directions to the tailgate yeah, they that had, just couldn't even speak. They had no was, idea. Was un- numerous. Well, because they, right. they changed the campus up so much since a lot of those people had been there. They're like, I don't know. The library used to be over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Take care. Uh, oh, no, that was it was a it was a very fun time. I'm glad that we got to experience that together. And the FaceTimes afterwards, yeah, uh, pretty incredible. If you follow if you follow Texas football message boards, yep. you can probably put together who we were talking with mm. and her monkey. Her monkey was also there. <laughs> was there? Yeah, fantastic yeah. time. Uh, Steve, off yeah. the tournament question: Are Hank Celtics going to win the NBA title? No. Oh the fuck! Oh, they're so why good. Not? Steve. I I will say this. Sounds like a yes. I want it to be Denver Boston because that's that's what I want in the NBA. Like all this stuff about the teams and the drama off the court and all the stuff that whatever NBA Twitter loves to talk about, you won't have in that game. You will have the best player in the world going to a, one of the most storied franchise, if not the most storied franchise, trying to get back on top. Like, that that's what that sport needs to me because when it comes to pure basketball, I believe those are the two best teams, uh, but I don't see Boston beating Denver because he's the best player. Oh. Your comments, Hank. I'd like to see it happen. I think what, we would. You think they'll be in the, in, in the uh, finals? Though? It's a team game, Stanford, Steve. Understood. Understood. All right, Denver's got a pretty good team. Like Jokic plays pretty good team basketball. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like you, you four could go out there. Yeah, yeah. You'll get you'll get a couple wins in the playoffs. Yeah, he'd get us some open looks for sure. Uh, Steve, back to the Frank uh, the Frank walks thing again. So I don't know how involved behind the scenes you are in the graphics department on Sports okay. Center, but maybe one time this season, as a treat, as a treat, if the Mets lose, could you actually have the logo spin? And have have Scott's head spin as okay. they go into Sports Center. All right, because Frank has made up this entire like fictional world in his head. Yeah, yeah. Where where Scott loves it when the Mets lose, and his yeah, head starts I, spinning around. Just like you don't have to talk about it, but just as Sports Center's intro, just have like a little SVP logo with the head spinning. around. Or maybe yeah, or maybe like a if you do Sunday Night Baseball and the Mets lose, like maybe like a pinata of Frank and be like Mets lose, Mets lose. <laughs> Because what we're well, doing, it's actually sick what we're doing is we're taking F- Frank's fictional world of torture that he's made for himself and we're we're turning it into reality. But I so, think that's actually good for Frank because he'd be like, see, yeah. I was right all along. Yeah, yeah that, it's would, bullshit. that would be the end. Yeah, that would, he would he would win that one. Yeah. Uh, no, but we've done the optimism meter with me and I'm I'm a diehard born loser Mets fan. And it's just I, I, I've seen it too many times. That is so, funny that you are you're you are a diehard Mets fan and you are on that show and still Frank is like they hate the Mets. Yeah, yeah. Like there's not a team I love more yeah. than them, but I've come to reality to expect the worst. Well, you're Yukon Huskies. No, they're not my team. <laughs> Steve, what do you think about Major League Baseball's strategy of having opening day overseas during the NCAA tournament? <laughs> <laughs> Quite something. When you say it out loud like that, it it sounds it, it sounds yeah. just about as bad as you can get. Yeah, yeah, it's it's brutal. Steve, um, what? Especially when they're trying to get yeah. back to where they were. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that one's tough. What what team in the tournament would have uh, worked worse for your or, or the po- poorest nickname? Because you're Stanford Steve, but like, would would uh, Grand Canyon Steve have worked if you had gone there? St. Peter's Steve, that would have worked. 
I always think about that. You went to Stanford SS, but like, what it, what happens if you had decided to go to McNeese State? McNeese Drake, State, Steve. How about Drake, Steve? Oh, Drake, Drake Steve. Steve would be good. Get there a little go. fade going. Your whole life would be different if you went somewhere. I mean, you could have been Notre Dame, Steve. Nah, could have. Drake, could've Steve, you got a huge do hog. You, do you regret not going to Notre Dame? I don't. I don't. Why? You would have. You would have been able to get like a cushy job as an executive somewhere in Chicago. Yeah, but that's not fun. Uh, I guess that's probably a good counterpoint. Yeah. Florida Steve would never get a job. Florida Steve would no. rock. <laughs> yeah, you'd be a lot yeah. of fun to hang out with. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Florida Steve would be alive. <laughs> Wait, what were the other? What were the other schools that you were deciding between? Uh, North Carolina. North Carolina Steve would be cool. Yep. Duke. Okay. Duke Steve would suck. Yeah. Howard Steve. Not Howard. Grambling uh, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Southern Steve. Southern Steve would be awesome. He'd rock, yeah. Tarleton State Steve. Billy Clyde. <laughs> There's a lot of Steves. Um, South Carolina would be hard to say. Yeah, South yeah. Carolina Steve would be weird. I did get a t-shirt one time from Sanford that it, it, they they made shirts that said Sam, not Stan. And Ooh. had the bulldog. I That's like good. That. What about yeah. BYU Steve? Mm, no, no. Soaking Steve. <laughs> Soaking Steve. Uh, no. All right, Steve, I got one last question for you. It's a rowback question. RHOBACK.com. Jake, you do you owe me some gear. Yeah, you do. You owe him some gear. I'm on it. Thanks, Pro, uh, promo code take 20% off. First purchase, rowback.com, joggers, hoodies, shorts, everything. Rank your three favorite bets on Friday as oh. people are listening to this and they are saying, I need a winner, and Stanford Steve's going to give us a winner. Three favorite bets on Friday. Okay. Uh, we're going to start with New Mexico. I mentioned uh, Donovan Dent barely played in that title game. I think he's a difference to have an extra ball handler against Clemson. Uh, Jamal Mashburn Jr., I'm biased. Jamal Mashburn, his dad, was one of my favorite people ever to work with at ESPN. We'll take New Mexico. Uh, I like AM. Wade Taylor, the fourth, I think is a tremendous player. And I like the matchup for AM for a full 40 minutes against Nebraska. And I believe UAB is getting too many points against San Diego State. Uh, when you look at what UAB is, uh, I love Andy Kennedy. Uh, just a phenomenal dude. They got six guys that average about eight, point, eight points or more a game. And we love how San Diego State loves to dial it back, you know, play defense, slow pace. I believe UAB has enough guys to keep that game close enough. So we're going to go New Mexico, a and and UAB. Okay. And your final four. My final four, where is it? Is you're UConn. one bracket guy, right? You're one bracket guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank God. And are you a highlighter guy? Uh, when it's going good. Yeah. Okay. Depends on, I, like, Saturday we'll make that decision. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. we just throw it out. Yeah. You know? Um, if we get to Saturday and feel good, that's always a good feeling. But again, be care. Don't, don't go multiple brackets this year because you're never going to get the combinations right with how you separate them. Yes. Uh, I have UConn, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Wisconsin. Okay. I fucking love this time of year so much. It's the best. Best two days of the year. Mm. Ooh. What last do you like Friday. more? I like last Friday and Saturday. Yeah. I mean, I do love conversations. Sa- I mean, if well. you – Saturday – like, that's what it's about of all those bids getting stolen because now you – the the angst – like, usually it's like one or two bubble teams that are worried. You know, like – Going in, it was Indiana State where all the big boys still had games to play, but then they lost, and then all these te- – I mean, being at, at D- in D.C. for the NC State run was incredible. Yeah. Like, yeah. See, those guys walking in for the games, like, <laughs> on Thursday, seeing big man walk in, I was like, man, he's he's got to get himself ready. Sure enough, he played 17 minutes in that first half against North Carolina and uh, was awesome. He's yeah, so, so smooth. So Okay, uh, so who do you have in your finals? Uh – UConn, Tennessee. UConn, Tennessee. UConn, Tennessee. And then UConn winning it all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Congrats to Wisconsin. Correct. I don't like this. Final four bound. And I Final four your, bust, I Wisconsin. Trust, I trust your opinion, so that well, makes me hurt. Is anybody not allowed in the room during JMU, Wisconsin? Well, no. PFD's going to be at the game. I'm going to be at that. So oh, you're going. You're I got kill me, though. I, I've had a wedding I've had to go to for I, – I committed to it eight months ago. A Friday wedding during March Madness. That's it's, worse than football season. It, but but it's I'm it, sorry. It's in Brooklyn, and it's ten minutes away from the arena. So after the wedding, I'm just going to go over, probably still wearing my wedding tux, and just go straight to the event and just sit there. It's the big dance, Steve. I'm going to be ready, dressed up for a big dance. This is this is very easy. You just go Chippendales costume to the game. 
Yeah, go shirtless with the bow tie. Yes, with yeah. the bow no tie. one wants to see that. In America. Yeah, yeah we do. That. Hey, wait, Hank, what did you say? Well, me and PFT have this uh, bracket busters team where if JMU oh, yeah. advances yeah. the farthest, we we get to split forty grand. So I'm gonna be all JMU Friday night. So I'll be yeah, I'll be, I'll be catching the rap. I'll be I'll be going nuts at Hank. He's a piece of shit. He is a piece of shit. So you're in the room. Yeah, and I will be mad at him. Actually, Hank, we were talking about having Ebo put on the wig and glasses. Hank should have to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna be mad at you. I, I will take out the wrath on Hank. It's going to bother Wedding me. Wedding Friday is March Madness. Crazy. Uh -huh. Crazy. Tough. It's tough. It's a tough one. Crazy. Did they look at the calendar? That's that's the major question. I can say with confidence that they did not. All right. It, I, I will say for the benefit, this is a week later. Normally. Yeah. Yes. You know, like this This year's weird with, you know, Masters being in the middle of August or April. Um. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. But, We'll uh, be in touch and uh, see you guys in Phoenix. Yes, yep. see you in Phoenix. Wings on Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday wings. for the women's Final Four. Love yes, who do, got, who do you got in that? Uh, I got well. I got uh, Iowa, LSU. No, they. I know. The I know. I know. Uh, I got LSU, Stanford, UConn. Line, help me. Uh, South Carolina. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. South Carolina. They're undefeated, right? There you go. Okay. Yep. They Getting undefeated. it. Undefeated. Yes. That's my final four. I don't okay. know if any of them play each other early. But that's no, you're fine. good. Oh, okay. I'm good. That's psh, lock it up. There's been more buzz about the women's game this year. It's good. It's, like like some of the teams hate each other, which I, yeah. I personally love. Yeah. They have more star power. Oh, that by far. It. That's by far. That's the one thing about, about women's sports that I think a lot of has like pushed a lot of people away in the past is it seems to be too positive. And you have to hate somebody, right? Yeah. So getting some hatred, some rivalries going, that's good for the sport. We wanna we wanna be like Caitlin Clark sucks, she flops, you know? I like we wanna have those takes. I think the only thing that would surpass the women's final four is if Kentucky gets to the final four, I feel like the America will be go hard on the Reed Shepherd bandwagon. Because the story yeah. with his parents and all that stuff, oh, Kentucky dad boy. Dad made me cry in college when they beat Stanford in the Final Four. Yeah, so I, I think that that's awesome. that's got the that's got the March Madness storylines written all over it. Yeah. yeah, Texas brackets up for grabs. That's what Stanford's the two. Just so you know, that that's that's mayhem in that bracket. Okay, all right, I like that. Uh, all, right. all right, Steve, thank you as always. You're the best, and let's win some bets. Appreciate you guys having me on. Stay safe. Drink a lot of water, Dan. I know you don't have a problem with drinking all that water. PMT's One Take episode is powered by our friends at Visible Wireless. Stanford Steve was brought to you by Visible Wireless. Draining a half-court buzzer beater to win the game. Not easy. Switching to Visible and saving on wireless with no hidden fees. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Visible is a wireless company with nothing to hide. Switch to Visible and get one-line wireless with unlimited, unlimited 5G data. Powered by Verizon, just $25 a month every month. Taxes and fees included. One line wireless, just $25 a month. Taxes and fees included. No hidden fees, no gotchas. Bench wireless with hidden fees and switch to visible. Switch now at visible.com. Rate with service on the visible plan for additional terms and network management practices. See visible.com. We're also brought to you by our friends at Morgan & Morgan, right? Yeah, Firefest of the Week is brought to you by our friends at Morgan & Morgan. You know what really sucks? Having to miss an entire Friday of NCAA games because you're traveling to a wedding. You know what really sucks? Breaking your toilet and having poop water spread all over your apartment and not being able to fix it. You know what else really sucks? Getting injured. But you know what doesn't suck? Calling Morgan & Morgan so they can help you get what you deserve. They will fight for you. While they can't help Hank store his Christmas tree... That's unfortunately still up, even though it's basically summertime already. Stop. They can help fight to get you full and fair compensation when injured. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash PMT or dial pound law, pound 529, from your cell phone. That's ForThePeople.com slash PMT or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Okay time for fire fest of the week henry you want to kick us off throw on those headphones Put the cans on hank come on hank throw those cans on uh i mean it's the best it's the best week of the year it really is it, it is a fun week it's hard to, to really be mad because it's like yeah you know i didn't do the best gambling but it's also like we get to do it again tomorrow yeah and mm -hmm. it's today was thursday tomorrow's friday we get to do it all weekend um oh friday's the weekend 
and then we get to do it tomorrow, oh, and then and then, and then two the weekend week days got and it. and two weekend days. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, got it. It's an absolute treat. So I can't. Uh, there's really no firefest that comes to mind. We got a shooting machine. I guess we can talk about the Rick Pitino drill now that the video is out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a really bad shooting performance. Now we have a shooting machine. Big Cat is adamant that he's a better shooter than me. Well, and, well, the stats show hey, you exactly who's better. Hey, so right? that's if kind of my just, fire. Fest. Yeah, your yeah, fire. No, fest is, that's, yeah, that's, you can't yes. admit it. This is. I, I said to PFP I don't, last it's not night. True, but there's I just finally a, a very small I, sample size. I finally understand what PFT goes through when you guys play golf and PFT beats you every time. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> oh, I don't. Oh no, no, we're actually even. I beat you in the Rick Pitino. We, we were this on the same team for the Rick Pitino shooting drill, which we got to do again. But I, sh- I shot better than you. And then we got this new shooting machine. And yesterday we did, Hank and I were like, let's shoot 10 three pointers. And uh, whoever has the most, you know, wins. And I, the first round, I won six to five out of 10. And Hank goes, well, I didn't count. I, I might have hit six. Second round, I won seven to four. And he's like, all right, we'll do one more. Third round, I won again, like seven to six. And then Hank shot again and hit four, and then you left, and I hit eight. No. And you're like, no, no, no. It's not, like you would have just made me stick there forever. It's okay, I think dude. I won one of them. No, you didn't. You no, literally did not. And Hank, all right. So yeah, the that's thing my is, fire it's all recorded on tape. Yeah. And then the ones that aren't recorded on tape, uh, the shooting machine has stats that you can look at. Which that should be my fire fest memes. Uh, we we got this new shooting machine. It's awesome, and they set me up with a profile. And then Memes texted me at like midnight last night, and he's like, uh, "Big Cat, you're gonna probably need a new profile." I was like, "What?" And he's like, "Me and Max just shot like a thousand shots." And Max said, "Oh yeah, I was chucking air balls." So my stats are fucked. So really, this entire office has become just a big game of uh, what's the coolest thing that we can get installed and still have people actually do work. Yeah, we did popcorn machine, we did the shooting machine, we have a golf. Simulator. We're gonna yeah. get a. We're gonna get a, a batting flight, cage. Batting, batting, batting cage. Batting cages. Cages we're gonna get a flight sim. <laughs> yep. I think he wants to get a barber chair. In the yep. Gym. I do. I want to get a barber chair. Hank, here's. You get a massage. You know room? what, Hank? We won't get a barber chair if you can. If you can prove that you're a better three point shooter than me, but you're not. I will. I will. And that's that's again. You know, it's it's. It's my year to. I'm, it's my prove it year. I gotta okay. prove it. I like Hank is looking at I'm three motivated. point shooting like it's like it's art, like it's subjective. Yeah, I'm just like, better than him. Well, it depends well, on who you ask. Small, like it's sometimes a small your shot looks better. Size. Like Big Cat beat me by maybe two. Every time we shoot, I, I shoot better than you. Well, f- we'll do an official okay. official right. contest. I beat you. No, what about Chili's? What about you've Chili's? got so what Max has Chili's. I beat you. Max has early you, onset. I beat you in Chili's <laughs> contest too. Max has Literally early. Every time we've done it, I've beaten you. So <laughs> Max has early onset Fleming. Hank uh, has early onset Billy football. Yeah, this yeah, is, he does. This entire last forty five seconds has been verbatim a billy football excuse but i'm at least a, it's 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 just the realization which is kind of like you know people have watched this grow as watched me grow on this podcast and it's just the realization that i'm like super 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 washed up not that i was ever really like yeah it's uh, you're actually in my more washed prime up when than i was we are. younger mm-hmm. which like is i was crazy. never like a prime athlete in my early 20s but i was i was decent but now I've just you know slowly realized that I'm really washed up, and the only way to unwash yourself up is to really work hard and train, and that's what I've started doing, and I just gotta keep keep going at it. But can you ever really be washed if you were never dirty to begin with? Yeah, I just wasn't that dirty. Yeah, also, you, were, you were never filthy. I I honestly don't like. No offense, to you, but I don't think it's like a washed up thing. I think just PFT and I are better athletes than you. Yeah, that's where it's just false. <laughs> yeah, well, I it's not false, Hank. What, we're, what, we're, what, what, we're, what place did you finish in the combine? We're nine years older than you and still better athletes than you. All right, good for you. <laughs> yeah, I think both me and Big Cat beat you in every combine event. Yeah, of course we did. No, <laughs> what? I beat you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm not. I I definitely beat you in something. Yeah, this is Billy. You're hey, Billy. I'm rooting for you. It's a big brother, little brother. You know what? I'll let you win the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Uh, all right, PFT. Uh, my my fire fest is twofold. One, I uh, I forgot my keys at the stream, uh, so I don't know how I'm, I'm going to get home tonight. I think someone's oh, bringing right them back now? right now. Oh shit! So I think someone's bringing them back to the office. It's uh, after midnight right now. I have early onset. Billy, Max is early onset, Frank Fleming, PFT is early onset dementia. Correct. Yes, correct, correct. 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 Yeah, Billy acts, actually true. Billy does act like he has CTE. I, I probably have CTE before Billy does. Yeah. Played more organized sports at a high level. Um, my other fire fest is that I'm traveling during March Madness tomorrow. 
So, yeah, when's your flight? Yeah, so I, it's actually crazy. Yeah, effort. yeah it, it is. It is crazy. So my flight is no at, way you're packed either. Oh uh, no, definitely. Well, <laughs> the only thing I'm packing it's a one night thing for a wedding, so I'm packing a suit, and that's it. So I'm also, good. it doesn't matter. You can't get into your house. I can't get in my house. So yeah, I can't pack anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be flying during the early games tomorrow. What which, time's your flight? Which is tough. I think it's at noon. Oh. Dude, I think it's at noon tomorrow. That's brutal. It's brutal. And what, what airline? Uh, what? Wh why do you ask? TVs. Uh, American? Nope. No TVs. I think Delta is the TV place. I can't keep track of which ones have TVs. As long as I it's think not Delta's a Boeing. Guaranteed. As also, but United and in American can be. It's really different. hard. It's really hard to watch live sports on a flight because if you look at your phone, you're like three minutes fast. Yeah, you're, you can't look at Twitter. Yeah, you can't look at your score apps. And every time the uh, the pilot gets on the horn and being like, oh, sorry, the flight didn't hit a switch, now we're going to crash. Every time they interrupt you, they just cut out the stream. And it's always, always at the most important time of game that they do that. So I'm going to be flying during the games tomorrow, which stinks. Then I'm going to be at a wedding during some of the other games, which, uh, yeah, I love love. I'm in favor of people getting married. Go for it. Um, March weddings are a choice. Friday March wedding is a choice. I committed to it eight months ago, and I knew that this was going to be a problem. Is an ultimate future me being like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go to this wedding. I'm going to miss some of the games. Uh, I'm going to sneak watch some of the games. That's my plan mm -hmm. uh, during the reception, during probably the ceremony too. And because I'm only flying for one night and I'm not bringing really too many clothes and I'm going to the JMU Wisconsin game right after the wedding ends, uh, I'm just going to have to go in a suit. So I'm going to be wearing a tux. To that the, will be fun. to the game. That's it's, fun. it's the big dance. Yeah, that's fun. And we're going dancing. Yeah. Uh, but the the whole situation, and then I have to fly back on Saturday during the games, also oh. during the early games. Oh. Um, but yeah, tomorrow's going to be a challenge for me. I, what's going to happen is I'm going to land. I'm going to open up my phone, and I'm going to see how much money I lost. Mm -hmm. That's how it's going to go. I'm going to look it's at really a, no different than what we're going to do. I, I'm going to look at a number. Yeah. Then I'm going to get on the plane, and then when I get off the plane, that number will be much will smaller. Be changed, that's yeah. that's how I'm spending my March Madness tomorrow. So I am. Uh, I apologize to you guys for not being at the stream tomorrow. Apologize to anyone that wanted to watch me and Big Cat at each other's throats. I'm the I'm tomorrow. the one that suffers the most from this, by the way. Well, yeah, you 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 touching me is a problem. Yeah, Hank's gotten very gropy. Yeah. Well, no, but I'm also you know PFT pick JMU as our our bracket busters team, so I have no choice but to root for JMU against yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah, Hank really didn't want to pick JMU. I know I wanted to pick you. Might have to just watch <laughs> um, it. You might have to watch it in a different room. <laughs> Big Cat just gonna lash out at me when it's like I'm just trying to support the company by rooting for my it. my Dave and Buster's team. Hank, I'm counting on you to be as annoying as possible. I don't want to be. I just want to like no you know, naturally. People yeah. get in trouble for not for not promoting. No, he doesn't. Teams, ha he doesn't have to about. try. He yeah. He could just yeah. be. Well, today it's like we had to do a huddle up thing, and I you know what do you do when you huddle up? You grab your teammates' shoulders and you bring them together. I did that in Big Give Cat. Give the actual Lashed context. Out. You won a bet, a big like, bet. Touch me. Touch, How dare you and touch then me? I lost a big bet. Who do you bet. think you are thinking you can touch me? Immediately after, you're you're like touching me and touching my neck. It's a technical <laughs> foul. It should have been a technical foul. You touched above, the, above said, the shoulders. That's a technical foul. That's all I wanted. You pinned the arm down? Big Cat pulled me over, and then I dropped everything on my and then stole my phone. Grand Theft Auto. Hmm. <laughs> is that what an auto is? Yeah. Uh, I, I do think that it's the universe, though, smiling on this podcast a little bit, Big Cat, because of, of all the times that – of all the things that could happen, our team's playing each other. Yeah. But it's on a day when we're not going to be in the same room where we won't get into a fight with each other. Yes. We might – the loser's definitely going to be mad looking at the social media post from the winner. I'm going to be just mad – if the Wisconsin loser, I'm going to be mad at Wisconsin. Like, I won't – that's the thing is, like, because it's not – it's not like if – it was Wisconsin playing Duke, and I had to deal with this guy over here who doesn't admit that he's a terrible athlete. I like the, I'll be very upset if Wisconsin I I loses, did, did but I also will 15 be. Fifteen minutes doing. That. I will be. I'll be very happy for you because I love you as a friend. Whereas this guy over here, mm -hmm. I, I want him to fail. I'm gonna be happy for you too, Big Cat, <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna root for you very hard against uh, against Duke or Vermont. I'll do. I just want to say right now, if if Wisconsin wins. I'm I'm converting my JMU fandom. I want you to absorb our powers. Yes, no, I will those do powers. Oh, listen. To beat Duke. It's all yeah. Or Vermont. Got to beat Duke. Actually, I hope Duke loses. Um yeah, whenever Duke loses. So it's great. a pretty bad fire fest. All things considered, you know, could be could be worse. But in terms of the sports calendar and travel syncing up, I feel like this is 
This is like an equinox of shit for me that I yeah. have to deal with. Uh, all right, my fire fest is short and sweet. Uh, I've actually, I've, I've been, I've been, Don, Chef Donnie's been cooking for me, been losing a little weight, working out a little more. Uh, but then I decided to get a haircut and shave right before all of our streams, and I just looked at myself all day, and I just have the fattest neck, and I should just never shave before I have to sit on, on a couch for four days straight. With just the worst angles possible. Well, what happens, I saw every single clip today, and yeah. I was like, "Holy fuck! I have not lost weight." What happens is, uh, before we get to the streams, a little behind the scenes, Pete sits down behind yeah. the cameras, and then he has like a sit-in for all of us sit there, and then he just lowers the cameras and gets the perfect angle to yep. make us look as bad as possible. Yeah. So that was a shock today. So just a reminder to not shave right before March Madness because there's really no way to look good. March Madness streams because you're just eating and sitting and sitting back and just like gross. Uh, but there's definitely a way to look extra bad, mm -hmm. and I've done it. Uh, all right, Jake, finish us off. Yeah, this is the best time of year, as you guys have said, and these are the best three weeks on the sports calendar. And I somehow just always feel sad when something goes wrong in my bracket. And it's just like, why am I feeling sad? I should be happy. It's March Madness. So, yeah. Well, you're, uh, your number two seed, or your your champion, champion North Carolina. Your champion advanced. did not lose in the first yeah, round. Yeah, but I thought I was being smart by putting Drake in the Elite Eight. That was a devastating loss, like we talked about earlier. But there should be no room for sadness here. Yet I'm here again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn. I mean, it's kind of nice, kind of sweet that you still care that much about your bracket. Yeah, because that's all I have, my integrity. Yeah. <laughs> and just like yeah, I don't my, think your integrity's my reputation. Tied. I don't think yeah. your reputation's tied to it either. But sure. In my own head, yeah, yeah. You're you're so like imagine if we it, it, to to put it in on this side of the glass. Like imagine if I was like my reputation is uh, based <laughs> on my gambling picks. Or I would be yeah, people would be it's calling true. me Hitler. But this is like the only time where I publicly make picks on something and hold myself to it. Yeah, what about mm -hmm. the, it's not fun. What about, what about the NFL season? Yeah, what about? Oh yeah, the bowling. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. there's no you don't have a punishment if your bracket gets busted. That's the difference. During football season, you get punished. Well, We're like it's a bad jig, bad jig. Yeah. If you lose your entire Final Four before the Sweet Sixteen, you should have to shave Max's back. <laughs> I literally have zero hairs. Like, let's That's go, Max. I hair. love it, Max. All right, like, his not chest, a single his chest. One. Well, no, because Max gets waxed. Oh yeah, you do get waxed. He gets waxed and nared. A Brazilian Max. Max has the. That's what he Max, orders. Max has the fucking cleanest pussy in this show. He's a smooth <laughs> little <Jesus>. Italian. <laughs> Who's my smooth little boy? Yeah, he's like a little baby boy. All right, uh, <laughs> let's wrap it up. We'll see everyone on Monday where we'll do a full recap. Uh, Shane Gillis episode is going to come on Wednesday, so we're going to do Monday because we are we don't do it a guest on Mondays. I misspoke a couple weeks ago, uh, so it will be coming on Wednesday, but Monday will be just pure talking about everything with the boys. Maybe if we get – I'll tell you what, if that Oakland guy hits some more threes and wins a game, we might have to have him Golky. On. Yeah, Golky. Golky. Uh, okay, numbers. 20. Eight. 40. Three. I'll go 68. 18. Four. 99 Pug. What would you say, PFT? 8. 21. I will say Golky's number three, so I feel good about this guy next to me. 34. Mm. Half of 68. Damn. Love you guys.